Hey guys, Derek here from Addictive Tips. So in this video, we're going to be talking about how to improve the speed and performance of GNOME Shell. So as you can see, I'm using GNOME Shell and uh, I've recently started using it again. And uh, it works great on my computers because I have nice computers, but not everybody has a nice computer. So it's still worth going over how to make it run better. And I, I should say, even though I have a nice graphics card and all of that stuff, and my laptop is pretty fast as well, GNOME still has some speed issues. So this is interesting, even from, from a standpoint of, of people who have nice computers and who aren't using something like four gigabytes of RAM or something like that. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to update your operating system and update GNOME specifically. If you're a GNOME user, you can easily do this by just searching for software, opening that up, and then just go to updates. You can see the OS updates here. Now, for me, I just have the Arch Linux keyring stuff, so I'm not gonna click download, but uh, you check for updates by clicking the refresh button up here, and you can click install. This will also install you know, improvements to the GNOME, which regularly get released. And I should say that if you're using a distribution that doesn't necessarily get a bunch of updates right away, consider using something that does get regular updates. Like if you're a GNOME user, maybe consider Fedora because they regularly get GNOME updates and stuff. So that is one way to improve the speed of GNOME. The next thing you need to do is you need to you need to disable the animations. Now, the way you disable animations is you open up the tweak tool. Now, in my article in the link description area below, I have how you can install this application. So we're not gonna go over it here, but you open it up, you click on the general tab, and you click on the slider right here that disables animations. As you can see, it's much quicker when you open things. You're not getting bogged down by the beautiful animation effects. So let's, in contrast, we can see this takes a lot of GPU power right here and it takes a lot to show these slides and stuff the way it goes over and the effects up here so a good way to save some performance just check this box right here now the second thing you have to do or I should say third thing after updating and disabling animations is the searching sources and you can do that by opening up the settings and then just go down to search now by default, GNOME can index your files. If you have some VMs and boxes, your calendar events, photos, software, weather, web, a bunch of different stuff. All of this takes processing power and RAM and all of that. So if you wanna save yourself some time, you can just disable search automatically for everything, or you can just disable the ones that you don't like. But then when you search, you're just seeing application results. You're not seeing stuff searched through the web and all of that. So that is, it's definitely a must do if you want to speed up GNOME. All right, so once we've disabled the animations, disabled searching sources and updated, we now need to worry about startup applications. Now, I know a lot of people have startup applications and if you use something like Dropbox or Steam or whatever on your Linux desktop, you may notice that, you know, like right here we have Dropbox automatically starting. Dropbox can be a resource hog, especially if you're syncing a lot of data back and forth. So you can just click the remove button here. And I have my Discord app startup that can take away from some resources so I can disable that as well and if you have a lot more you can just go through and close those it's not going to completely and utterly improve the uh, you know the the speed of everything but it will definitely get rid of the time you need to wait to log in and it will probably save some processing power if you're not running these applications at all times in the background and you know just open them up when you need them all right so we've gotten rid of extensions we've done all those other things another thing that you can do to increase your performance on GNOME is to turn off extensions. Now I use quite a few extensions. The main thing is top icons and you know places static and in, a status indicator for that. I use no symbolic icons because I hate how they're inconsistent. And uh, I use native window placement and I also use uh, alternate tab. So extensions all take up processing power within GNOME. So disa disabling them and not using them at all, or at least going through and turning off a lot of the ones that you use is gonna save you some processing power. So just click this tab up here and you can automatically disable all of your extensions, or you can also go through the list and turn those off, but that's gonna save you even more performance. And I guess if we check the RAM here, I've got a bunch of applications running in the background but this was seven gigabytes earlier, so having it down to four is pretty nice. 
And uh, after disabling the extensions, that's pretty much all you can do to improve the performance of GNOME. If you're still having issues, I would check out GNOME Classic mode or maybe even a different desktop environment. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know that I've been frustrated with GNOME in the past and GNOME Shell is something that I've always had a love-hate relationship with. I recently used Plasma for a long time. You guys can attest to my videos. But after the improvements and stability updates and the performance tweaks that you can do with GNOME, I'm starting to like it again. And uh, something I definitely recommend you guys taking a time to go through and do yourself. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have to get going. A bit of a long one here, but uh, I'll see you in the next one.